couple of examples last game where Russ was frustrated and then, you know, it led to two instances where Toronto got threes on the other end because of it. How do you coach that and how do you make sure that accountability is taking place? Yeah, we, we, we went over some film today with the group and that play, I, the same one we're talking about was definitely discussed. We thought he got fouled in the right corner across from their bench. I think it was a seven point game, it was like eight and something to go. And then got frustrated with the ref and didn't, didn't run back, but we have to do better. Uh, that's part of the game. Nobody's going to be perfect. Uh, both teams and the referees, nobody's going to be perfect. Nobody's trying to make a mistake. But we got to be able to handle that uh, through the game and, and be much better. We have to we have to play better. I think they we cut the we cut the lead. Um, I think each quarter we, we started off bad. We still cut the lead to like four or five just about in every quarter. Uh, they came out every time we made a run, they came out and hit a bang, bang three on us. Or we took a bad shot and they came out, you know, transition layups. Everybody, everybody, we all need to be better and we will. It's still, like I said, we still have to continue to continue to fight for each other. And, and I have confidence in this team, this, they, they will. It also seems like sometimes you guys are getting in trouble where you know, somebody in the corner is ball watching and then, you know, their guy rotates to a new spot. What's the balance between, you know, seeing what's going on on the other side of the floor so that you can rotate when you need to, but then, you know, obviously not letting your man get by. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's part of what we're going through. Like a lot of teams where, especially this month where practice is going to be very limited and guys need to have those practice reps because their experiences are just basically, uh, it just becomes all ex game experience and we all know you have to be uh, you have to practice your craft and we're doing our best that we can uh, but some of the things that we are making mistakes uh, we're doing the best we can to correct them with film today we had actually a pretty good uh, correction day uh, on some of the things that we've had some trouble matching up in transition and but it's going to help us I, I really believe uh, this is all good growing pains that we all have to go through. Obviously, we had a lot of other things that we had to go through as well, but just straight basketball, with, regardless of what's happened, we still have to go through those growing pains and, and to be able to see them, uh, be able to uh, and react quicker and also see it before they even happen. When you have a good feel for the team and a good feel for the, the personnel, that gains through that gains over time. And, we got guys that are going to continue to work hard and it's going to help them over time. Chase. Hey, Scott, first of all, how is Ish feeling today? Um, he went through practice today. I was, I was actually a little concerned coming into the practice thinking that maybe Ish will be, you know, pretty banged up. I mean, he has, he has a lot of stitches uh, right below, right below his lip on the outside and then he has I think five or six in the inside so there's a little swollen but he practiced and uh, he's he's a, he's tough he's a tough dude and he's gonna he wanted to play last night but they, we just could not stop the bleeding and you know you can't be on a court with that uh, being the case but he feels he feels better he'd be he'd be fine tomorrow and when it comes to three-point defense um the tracking number suggests you aren't leaving that many players wide open relative to the league, but the, the percentages they're making is really high. Does that mean you might be leaving the wrong players open? Is that something you need to emphasize? Well, I think, like I said earlier, when you know, when you have the experience and you can do it game speed, that takes time and we're going to keep working with all of our guys. Uh, but some, some, we're, some of the time, I thought last night, we didn't close all the way out to the shooter. I know, the tracking uh, says one thing, but sometimes the tracking uh, doesn't doesn't say what I actually see. Uh, so we need to we need to definitely close all the way out and be the second jumper without fouling, but making them miss. I thought we we closed out with the hand down uh, close enough to be you to be tracked, but not close enough for them to be a missed shot. 
Mark Berman. Uh, Scott, uh, hopefully you could hear me. Um, I was just asking about Denis. I know you had talked about uh, in November that he was had a lot of swagger and you know you were really uh, hopeful what has he surprised you with and what does he still have to work on well yeah he does he's he's, he's a he's a, a, a young player that cares a young player that plays hard um, but he's also a, a player that needs to continue to grow and learn and, and he will today was another good teaching day for him he picks things up the reps need to, you know, you, you grow up in this league one day, one practice, one game, one week, one month, one season at a time. And he's he's going to be right where we need to be because of the work that he puts in. I like the fact that his, his care level is extremely high. He gets down on himself when he doesn't play well, when he doesn't shoot the ball well. And that's my job is to keep him, keep him going, keep him confident. You know, he hasn't shot the ball well the last few games, but he's a good shooter. He's gonna, that's going to that's gonna snap out of it. But that's another thing that uh, he's going to have to learn to you know, be able to go. This is one of the first times he's going to go. He's going through that. But usually if you do the right things and you work on the right things day to day, you don't, you don't change it uh, through a bad stretch to a good stretch. You just stay focused on doing the same thing, become a creature of habit you're going to have success. And that's what he's done. He does the same thing every day. And a lot of young players don't do that. So I, I love, I love what he brings. And he's going to continue to improve as the season goes on. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Right. Scott, Scott, do you sense that the organization is as hopeful about this season as it was even a couple of weeks ago? Like, do you guys still have the same vibes in trying to accomplish playoff goals? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope so. I, I know that we are. We're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep working. We're not going to get, we're not going to throw the towel in. We don't have that mindset. Our owner doesn't, our general manager, myself, our staff, or players. We definitely had an a, a, a interesting uh, start of the season, but we still have 50 games to go. Sometimes when you don't have, in the season, when you don't have a good start, just like if you don't shoot the ball well to start the season, it becomes heavy. And we can't lose the fact that there's a lot of basketball left and we're, we're still fighting through a lot of the things that, that need to be fought through and we need to do it together. Like, there's no question tomorrow night's game is going to be a tough game. They're, they're physical, they're tough. They got some athleticism, they got some good experience, but we can, we can come in and, and, and give ourselves a chance to win and, and win the game. We're four and four of the last eight. And, you know, we just got to keep, plugging and keep battling. Um, yeah, we still, our goal is still to keep climbing the, the standings and it's definitely, uh, we're behind and, but it's not like we're just going to throw in and, 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 and not compete and not play. We, we didn't, we didn't close the game last night. We had a chance to, I think it was, you know, six or eight points with six minutes to go. And, we didn't, we didn't do what we needed to do. And that's a very good team that's hot right now. And, and we gave them a lot of good looking threes. Penny. Hi, Scott. Um, I wanted to ask you about Denny's game. Uh, in previous game, we saw multiple teams assigning smaller defenders on Denny, uh, whether it was uh, Seth Curry, Kobe White, Fultz, or Van Vliet. Uh, all of them are 6'4 at best, and Danny is a 6'9 forward who showcased his, uh, in Europe his ability to uh, score and facilitate from the post. Uh, is this something uh, we might see more in the future, uh, the team trying to take advantage of his abilities uh, in the post? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's times when you have matchups and good spacing that he's going to be able to get looks, but there's also times when Rolo has it and He's in the game with Rolo a lot. You only can have one guy posting up at the same time. Um, he just he, he just needs to just keep improving. There's going to be times where he's going to get some post looks. There's, there's going to be like like lately he's getting a lot of good looking threes and and I like the fact that he missed the three, got the rebound, and took it to the basket, and not always settle for that. But he, he's going to keep improving. He's going to keep learning how how to play uh, the way that we want and. I, I think he's at a pretty good pace right now. He's playing a lot of minutes. 
uh, and not not a lot of guys that are young play a lot of minutes. There's, uh, but he's going to get he started for a lot of games, and I'm assuming if, if things if he keeps doing what he needs to do, uh, and DB feels more comfortable, he'll get back to that that starting spot. But right now he's 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 had a, a good uh, uh, learning curve, but post ups definitely will be in, in the future. Quentin. Hey, Coach, you guys are um, last in the league in first half points allowed. It's about 63.7 per game. You guys were last in the league last year and the year before that, you were 28. What it seems to be the issue with you all on defense as to, you know, going down early and not being able or having to battle back all game long to uh, to just be competitive? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, not a good position to be in always playing, playing from behind. Uh, we have recently, especially. Uh, we have to we have to change the lineup. We're changing some things around to try to rectify that issue. But we still haven't we haven't got there yet. Uh, last game, I thought we you know they went on a run late. It seems to be later in the quarters that teams are going on runs. And we have to be able to, to clean that up. And secondly, what do you think uh, Toronto did specifically last night and and just got stifling you guys at times? Like, what, what did they take away or just do well that that led to the loss? Well, they have some good length. They got some nice, quick guards that, that they, they, they cover a lot of ground. Uh, but looking back, even I showed the players, I think I showed in the, in the film, you know, we showed 12 best threes that we had that were all that were all paint touch spray spray threes, most of them, two on the ball, kick out threes or good to great passing threes, and we missed them all. Uh, normally, I don't like to show players best shots, but I want to know that I want them to know if you keep doing the right thing, those shots are going to fall for you. Uh, they fell for them last night. I mean, I thought we helped them a lot, but they were in the same position that we were in, but we missed them, um, especially the ones I showed today. But that's 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 going to turn around. We got some pretty good shooters, and we got to be able to still just step up there with confidence and and, and take the next one, knowing that you're going to make it. And real quickly for the last question, is everybody healthy that we know of? Did everybody participate in practice that could? Um, Russell and and Brad um, did very little. Um, they were just mainly watching, and encouraging, did a little bit of warm up, and some shots, but. That's always been the case, knowing that we have um, three and four nights uh, back to back and three and four night coming up. Hey, Danny, I'm just wondering, you know, through 18 career games so far, what have you been happy with about how you've played and, and what do you think you need to improve on? I think it's more than 18, no? More than 18? How many games is that? More than 18. 20 something, no? 20? What? How many games do you play? Yeah. For you. Oh, for me. Yeah. It's, okay. Um, how I feel about it, I just feel good. I mean, as, as many games as I, as more games that I play, I get more experience. I'm still learning the league. I mean, it's not it's not easy to come here, come every night and just uh, learn all new players. So every night you get new players to learn about and you know what they do and read the scouting report and, and, and what their game style is. And, and it's not easy. I mean, it's especially as a rookie and you have a game every day, you need to, okay, that game is, is gone through. Now I need to focus on the New York Knicks. I need to know who's playing on the New York Knicks, what 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 the players are, where, where they go. So, I mean, it's really intense. It's really intense. You're, you need to be really focused. Um, and uh, yeah, so, I mean, in the end of the day, as more games that I play is, is better for me. So I'm just enjoying it. And what have you noticed about how teams are guarding you now compared to, you know, your first few games? Um, have you noticed any differences? I don't know. Did you notice any differences? Well, you, you had a very hot shooting start. Do you feel like teams are starting to take away some of the things that you were doing well early? What do you mean? Explain. I don't understand. Well, I'm just curious because, like, you came out and you, you were making a, a ton of shots, and I would imagine that you know teams maybe started uh, putting you higher on the scouting report uh, because of that. Oh, um, I mean, I guess I didn't read their scouting report, but um, if they put me higher on the scouting report, I mean, 
it's, it's an honor for me. I mean, it, it, this is my rookie year, and um, you know that players recognize you more and more and more. It's it's just it's just a dream coming true, you know, especially in your first year. Um, you put in all that work and all that effort, and uh, when it pays off in the game and, and players start recognizing you and who know who you are, it's it's, it's really an honor. So, um, I mean, I'm just going to continue playing my game, hopefully getting better, hopefully going higher on a scouting report, and uh, we'll go from there. Neil? Hey, Denny. Uh, you know, obviously, like you said, you know, it's tough to get accustomed to 450 new NBA players that you have to see. What are some of the things that have helped you most best get acclimated? Obviously still tough. Is it a lot of film review? Is it just watching a lot of games live when you guys have the time? What do you feel helps you get acclimated the best? So first of all, I'll give a tons of, tons of credit to our coaching staff. I mean, coaching staff and, and all the players around me that um, um, treated me so good and, and helping me so much and talk to me a lot and, and really really sitting down and watching film with me and, and giving me a lot of tips to uh, how to do this and how to how to guard him and um, yeah I'll, I'll give I'll give a lot of respect to our coaching staff they do a really great job um, with everybody especially me as a rookie of, of understanding the game of, of, of the NBA and understanding the players so that's all a shout out to them Mark Berman Uh, hey, Denny, I hope you can hear me uh, from the New York Post. I was just wondering, you know, uh, during draft night, you know, you had fallen to eight with the Knicks on the clock. You know, there's a lot of Israelis in New York City. I was wondering what was going through your mind uh, when the Knicks had a chance there. I mean, in my mind, in the same time, I was just getting drafted. I mean, I didn't think about the city or how many people is in, are, in, are in the city and, and how many Jews are in this, in this city. I was just hoping to go to a team that believes in me and, 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 and it wants me there, and, and that, that's what happened. Any team that, 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 that drafted me, I'll be happy with, and I'm with the Wizards, and, and I'm happy as I can be. And I'm happy here, and, and that's, my, that's my home right now. And, you know, I didn't think about it uh, on the city and, and, and what are the situations until I really got drafted. So it wasn't really. Do you have a family uh, in Washington from Israel, uh, or are you basically alone? No, I, I got family with me. When Scott told us um, earlier this week, the conversation that he had with you when he told told you that you wouldn't be starting, that he said, you know, I made to make I made sure to let him know that it wasn't a permanent thing that you're going to be a starter in this league for a long time. What was that conversation like from from your perspective? Great. <laughs> Sorry. I think for me, uh, coach is just um, letting me having the best situations to help the team. In the end of the day, I love everybody around here, and I want the best for everybody. And if I'm going to come off the bench and help the team from the bench, and, and we're going to get wins in the end, that's all that matters for me. So, I mean, I took it I took it as a good thing. I'm all, all the time with Coach Brooks telling me I'm taking it as a positive thing. He knows a lot about basketball, and and, and he really uh, he really um, know how to how to how to especially uh, let a rookie feel comfortable in this league, and and, and I feel comfortable. I, I I feel like we have trust, and and we just we have both um, the same mentality as winning. So in the end, I'm I'm gonna say whatever he says and whatever is best for the team, and uh, yeah, I truly trust him. And I'm wondering if you are still kind of in, in frequent contact with your uh, Maccabee teammates back in Israel, like if they've ever been texting you like, man, it seems like it's crazy over there. Like what's going on? Have you been kind of having those conversations or no? Crazy, crazy, but what do you mean crazy? Well, you guys stopped for two weeks because of COVID. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, it's crazy, but they facing it as well, you know? But you really faces this as well and uh, they faced uh, COVID back there also, so it's not something that's really surprising them. Um, but I'm still in touch with them. I'm, I'm watching every game that I can, um, cheering them up, texting everybody after the game. I'm really, I'm really close to my my team that I grew up in. So yeah, I'm still in touch with everybody. Cool. Thanks, Denny. I hope they get you a sweatshirt. 
Yeah, hopefully I'll install or, or turn off the air conditioning or something. You know, it'll be great. Uh, Zach. Hey, Denny. Um, I want to ask you about Rui. Um, I'm sure you've gotten to know him over the last few months, but what is he like on the court, uh, off the court, and has he helped you acclimate to the league? So, Rui, I'll, I'll start off by saying Rui's a great guy. I mean, um, we have a lot in common. What's up, Rob? My fault. Don't say hi to me. I'm sorry. My fault. I'm not supposed to be in here. <laughs> damn. Um, damn, you got my focus. Um, so I'll start off by saying Rudy's a great guy. I mean, we have a lot of common. We came from, you know, he he learned he he uh, went to college, so it's different. But we still coming from different countries, and um, we really have a lot in common. But um, yeah, he helps me. I mean, he he's been here rookie last year, and. He knows how, how to be a rookie and what's the process of it. So he talks to me a lot. And um, yeah, I mean, on the court, he's just playing tough. He's a tough guy, a competitor, and, and, and that's what we need. And he, he in, the end of the, in the end of the day, he got skill and he want to win. And, and that's what is most important in this league. And, uh, I feel he has a bright future ahead of him. He just need to keep working. And, and I think the sky's the limit for him and, and for the team. Does he teach you any Japanese and do you teach him any Hebrew or? I mean, we sing birthday songs in, in Japanese and Hebrew. So um, we, we, we switch and we, we, we do some Japanese classes and stuff, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, you're on. Uh, before we go to the Hebrew uh, section, Danny, uh, first of all, update from Akabi's game because they're playing the semifinal and this was uh, discussed here, so they're, up by two, second quarter against the uh, Holon. So uh, to all of you guys, you know, it's 9 p.m. Uh, over here in Israel, 9, 930. Um, and I just wanted to ask in English, uh, obviously we saw yesterday that uh, assist, one-handed assist to, to Russ, uh, sort of like an open court. And I just wanted to, to ask you how you feel, you know, uh, Hopefully, again, I hope you're getting warm there, but uh, how do you feel in the open court? If you can talk about that, uh, is that like, because it feels like it's more, it's it's the most natural for you. I mean, it's the most, I, I want like, it's one of the natural things I do because um, I did it my whole life. You know, since I started playing basketball, I always like to push the ball and I always look for passes and, and just my mind is different when I'm in the open court. I just see things like differently. I don't know how to explain it. It's just in my head, but um, it comes natural to me. You know, it's, it's more opportunities I got to 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 push the ball and and and, and to make plays for my teammates is, is great because I feel I feel that I'm uh, I had it my whole uh, my whole career and hopefully I'm going to improve in that as well. So, I mean, I'm still need to to be familiar with uh, everybody and the defenses and. I mean, slowly I'll, I'll, I'll learn and I'll be better, so. Um, hey, Robin, um, what do you think you guys need to do to uh, achieve a little bit more consistency from game to game? Um, it's a good word to use about consistency. Um, uh, but uh, I think our, our two biggest issues have been um, transition and then second chance points for the other team. Um, that's something that's plagued us through the majority of our games. And um, three-point defense, obviously, last night was an issue, and it has been for much of the year. Um, from what you're seeing from your vantage point, what, what can you guys do differently to, to change that? Um, I think we're, in, we're all in agreement that uh, we, we all need to take better pride, more pride in our individual matchups. Um, guys are driving us, and somebody has to rotate over to help, and then people are getting open shots, easy looks. Neil. Hey, Robin, obviously you have, you know, a ton of NBA experience, 12 years. When in your NBA career early on, did you feel like you started to know the tendencies of the other, you know, 400 plus NBA players? And, you know, how tough is that, you know, for the younger guys you guys have on this team to just need to build up that experience before they can get there? Yeah, it's definitely something that uh, it takes a little bit. Uh, it took me a couple of years. You, um, 
I'd say maybe two years, um, perhaps into my third. Uh, it's a, a lot of watching film, but at the same time, film film isn't necessarily uh, it's it's not necessarily the same as experiencing it for yourself. You know, um, going out there and uh, it, it's seeing it on film that you have to keep uh, Pascal Pascal Siakam to his to his left. It's not the same as figuring out how you physically need to do that on the floor. Ava. Robin, I've been dying to compare hair notes all season, but I've been told that would be unprofessional. So I will instead ask you the very professional question. Um, I, I'm sorry if, if this is something you do and I just haven't noticed, but why have you been sitting on the baseline rather than your chair? Like, is it a, is it a thing with your back? Do they need to get you a better spot on the bench? <laughs> no, I've been doing that for a few years now. Uh, okay, it's a, it's a preventative measure just to make sure my, my you know, my body's feeling good, specifically my back. And then um, Scott Brooks called today like a correction day. When you are able to have the rare practices that you guys have had this month, I guess, what are you able to get done? Is it more just like walking through uh, little things that Scott Brooks sees? Or are you going through full sets and things like that? Like how productive do you feel like you guys are able to be? I think uh, I think we, we have a great practice schedule. Um, like you said, and a lot of it is, is I think teaching, coaching, talking to one another, um, communicate what changes we need to make, what needs to be done better. 12 years in, do you miss all the practices that you normally have or are you okay with the scaled back schedule? Um, you know, I, I always, uh, I always relish the chance to be on the court with the guys, um, and to get better. That said, one thing that, uh, one thing that I think is a bit of a silver lining and I don't, I don't know if this is a sentiment that has been echoed across the league, but we haven't had too many shoot arounds and I don't know, I don't know if a lot of teams have been with, uh, with the testing measures and not in, and what have you, but, uh, I've never been a big shoot around guy, so. Okay, thanks Robin. Zach. Hey Robin, uh, I asked you about Rui on our podcast back in December, um, but since you've gotten to know him a little bit, I'm sure, uh, what's been your relationship with him like? Is it becoming like a senpai, kohai relationship? No, not at all, not at all. He doesn't need any, uh, he doesn't really need any guidance from me. Um, I love seeing. Uh, I, I do. I do love that we're both two post-up guys on the team. Um, a lot of teams don't have a, a lot of those, but uh, I love seeing him go to work down there on the block. Uh, I love seeing his hook shots occasionally. It comes not very naturally to him. I also um, saw you wearing a Japanese anime T-shirt yesterday. Uh, do you guys discuss Japanese things or? Uh, not too often. It happens occasionally, but we just, you know, we shoot the breeze and whatever comes up, comes up. We're, we're both well-versed on a lot of different topics and uh, there's a wide breadth of things. I'm sure you are. Okay, thanks, man. Mark Berman. Hey, uh, Robin, Mark Berman for the New York Post. I've been asking some veteran players about this weird season and not having reporters in the locker room this season. How How is that? Is it is it kind of cool that you guys have a little more privacy? Um, I haven't really thought about it. Uh, no, that's not to say I don't miss you guys. <laughs> that's, not, that's, not, that's not what I'm getting at. But um, it, it certainly is a different dynamic. Um, I have noticed that the locker rooms do seem a bit, a bit quieter. Um, we, have diff we have two separate locker rooms for the social distancing uh, measures. So the locker rooms do seem a bit quieter. Uh, I, I, I sometimes miss the personal interactions. You, you have people doing their thing on the table, out on the court shooting. So I find myself sometimes in there by myself. I'm a, I'm a little lonely at times. So I do wish you were in there, Mark. I wish <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Chase, you have another? Yes. Um, Bradley Beal is leading all Eastern Conference guards in, in NBA All-Star fan voting. And it's not traditionally uh, something that he's done very well in, despite, you know, 
very well. Um, what's it like to see him kind of, you know, finally get respect in, in that regard? Sure. Um, I, I think it's fantastic. It's more than well deserved. Uh, it's what, what, one of the things that's really been a, a pleasure here. And I think I mentioned it before, but one of the things that's really been a pleasure here, you get to see a guy one or two, one or two, three times a year, uh, typically, but to see Brad, uh, do his thing night in and night out. It's, it's really, uh, it's, all, it's all the more impressive. And then you mentioned uh, Rui's hook shot. You uh, are up there among active players, most hook shots made in your career. It seems like a trusty move for you. How, how would you describe your hook shot? <laughs> uh, I've heard a, a few really good descriptions. Um, I hear some people lobbing the grenade and some people kind of call it a ice cream scoop hook shot. And I think those are, those are both, uh, those, those do it justice. Um, I've always kind of thought of it like you, <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed to say this. Have, do you remember um, the barrel of monkey toys? And you kind of, the, the barrel, the, I, I wish I could zoom out right now, but the monkey, <laughs> the like, is, is that possible? And the other monkeys, they kind of have like the formation like this or something. <laughs> like a barrel of monkey hook shot or something. Thank you for the demonstration. No problem. No problem. Yeah, we're putting that in the highlight reel for the end of the season. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll finish up with Ava. Yeah, I was going to say, this is a real a loose Zoom we're having here. Um, Robin, with the separate locker rooms, do you have, like, are there people assigned to each locker room each night? Like, do you, can you only go into one for all season? No, it, it rotates game by game. Oh. Who's usually in your locker room when you're not in there alone? Um, Owl, um, Davies. We have the same shooting time, so Davies is in there. Okay, cool. Thank you.